I've been using the Rode VideoMic Go as my main go-to mic since I got my first camera and believe me, I have plenty of real-world experience using the mic on more audio-sensitive projects like interviews and dubbing commentaries or controlled environments like this video. I coupled the VideoMic Go with the Zoom H2n and personally, I'm very impressed with the results I've gotten over the years. I got the mic because I was on a tight budget and there was no contesting road if you wanted an affordable but decent video mic. So to make a long story short, I didn't really have a choice. When it comes down to it though, the mic captures more than decent audio. It's actually really good considering how much I paid for it. But it's 2019 guys. We have choices. Rode's own video mic Pro is similarly affordable but doesn't come with the issues the video mic go does. All right, so let's just get into why I don't recommend anyone buy the Rode video mic go. The first issue is that it picks up radio frequency interference. That simply means that your videos will have these annoying clicking sounds whenever your mic comes into contact with Wi-Fi and cellular signals. You need to make sure that you're as far away as possible from anything that emits RF interference and good luck with that because we don't live in that world anymore. And if your camera has Wi-Fi, you have to remember to turn that off. If you're not constantly monitoring your audio when you're using this mic, you're living close to the edge, my friend. You know, like me. So before I get to my biggest gripe with the video mic, let me make this clear. I didn't really have this issue with my previous Nikon D5200, so I'm not sure if this only happens on Sony cameras or if it's just user error. But on my Sony a6500, the mic completely ignores my camera's gain settings. It doesn't matter how I set it, it just auto-adjusts the gain to the loudest sound it picks up. But when it's not picking up any sounds, the mic boosts the gain really high until it finds something audible. While it sounds like a feature, it's actually a huge, huge con. Here's what I mean. Remember when I said that the mic boosts the gain really high when it's silent? What do you think happens when you start talking after a long silence? The sound will peak. Eventually it does readjust to a more suitable level, but not before ruining your audio and taking your ears with it. Today, I felt like, you know what? I really need peace. Like, I really need silence, but I don't want my silence to feel unproductive. And that's something that's really important to me. I need to always try to be productive, as productive as possible. It sounds bad, and it is, but you know what? Let's be optimistic. Assuming you know these issues exist, it's relatively easy to avoid, right? Okay. So let me put the nail in the coffin. Here's the real deal breaker for me and why I can't recommend this mic at all. The mic handles wind noise terribly on my A6500. You see, wind noise is treated as a loud sound. So what does the mic do when it picks up loud sounds? It lowers the gain to avoid peaking. So at any time, if you're talking to the mic, when the wind is blowing, your audio is gonna sound like it's stuttering because the mic keeps switching between low and high gain levels. We're in Tanjung Aru right now. Came down to watch Velomity crew perform and yeah, it's a cool event. Hey guys, I'm at KL. Uh, right now we're in an event. So why not use a dead cat? As you can see, I am. The dead cat does a decent job canceling wind noise coming from the front of the mic, but somehow it still manages to pick up wind noise blowing from the back of the mic. Which is annoying because I had to buy the dead cat separately and it wasn't cheap. There are sort of a few ways to fix this. Some people online recommend making a custom dead cat for the back of the mic. Smart, but that's sort of a lot of work for how much I paid for it. So if you have a choice, you know, just don't get this mic. All right, so I'm not gonna force your purchase decisions. If you think you can live with the restrictions of the mic, sure. 
the video mic go is still a decent and depending on how you use it a very usable mic but i think if you're looking to make a long-term decision getting the video mic go is just a band-aid for a deep cut my advice save yourself the hassle heartache and the headache don't get the road video mic go not in 2019 all right, so I hope you guys found the video useful. I hope you enjoyed it. What do you think? I'm recording this video with the Rode VideoMic Go coupled with the Zoom H2n. And I think in general, the, the mic actually sounds good. You know, it's not that bad. It's just the way you're gonna be using this mic is just not worth the trouble. Yeah, so that's all I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it and, you know, subscribe if you want to see more. And I know I haven't been making a lot of videos on this channel for a while and I'm hoping to change that. Yeah, I, I have another channel I'm working on right now. It's moving up pretty slow, but the bulk of my views are on Instagram, IGTV and... Uh, Facebook. You can check out my other channel, Battle Everything, if you guys are interested in more like vlogs and stuff. I'm really hoping to get back into making videos for this channel. Alright guys, so that's it. This is Andrew Matthew. You can call me Matt.